So a student sent me this question online and I actually went to my live stream and started exploring it. But the problem was, guess what? I graphed it wrong. So everything I did on that live stream was completely incorrect because I don't know, on the live stream, I just had a mental fart uh, in my brain. And I was like, man, I gotta go ahead and correct this. I gotta go ahead and fix the mistake and show you what I should have if I had a little time and I wasn't on a live stream, how I should have approached the problem. So as I already previously showed, we have a, an equation of a line, y equals one over six x, what was it, plus six. And we want to be able to determine, does this point, how far is the point from the line? So I went to go and graph it, but actually I did a slope of six over one instead of one over six. That was my mistake. Guys, it happens. Even to somebody that's done thousands of math problems, you're capable of doing those things. And just like when you take a test, sometimes when I have a live stream, like I'm not thinking clearly, right? There's people that are watching everything that I do and it messes with my brain. So I get it when you take a test and you have this anxiety and it's like all the stressors, breathe, slow down, and let's go ahead and think about this. The first thing I always want to be able to do, especially on an equation like this, which I should have done first, is, well, let's just go and double check to make sure that this point does not lie on the line. Because to do the work, to be uh, identify the distance from this point to the line is a little bit of work. And so what I should have done first is say, well, this is an X and a Y coordinate. Can I plug this point into this equation? And if that makes it true, then that means that point lies on the line. So I replaced a y with five and my x with a negative six. I don't know why I put the one over six in parentheses. I didn't really need to do that, but it, it is what it is. So one over six times negative six is just gonna be a negative one. So in this problem, guess what guys? The distance from that point to your equation is zero. Look how quickly I was able to do that. That's what I should have just gave the student the answer on. And it would have been real quick and it would have been real fast, but I didn't even think about that on my live stream. Now, the student might've still been confused. Oh, so anyways, the distance is going to be zero since it lies on the line. But although sometimes students, they might've been asked this question and maybe they chose the wrong one because they wanted me to actually go through the process of how do you find the distance from a line to a point? Well, there's actually a formula for that and a process. So how about we change up the problem real quick? So for those of you that are curious on how to do a problem like this, why don't we just change up the numbers to the point a little bit? And so therefore we can identify what that distance is going to be. Now, the important thing is when we are doing, when we're trying to identify the distance from a, an equation to a point, we don't wanna use our slope intercept form. What we're gonna to wanna to use is going to be using a standard form of your R line. So therefore, what I simply need to do in this case is I need to go ahead and get all these values over to the same side to identify my A, B, and my C. Now, it's very important that you notice that these are capital letters. And what that means is we want these to be integers, not fractions. So therefore, to get this one over six to not be a six anymore, I'm gonna need to multiply everything times a positive six. Now, I'll have a final equation of a six y minus a x minus a 36 is equal to a zero. So therefore, if we just go ahead and label this, my a is gonna be a negative one, my b is gonna equal a positive six, and my c is equal to a negative 36. Now, the next piece of information is I need to identify these points, but we're not gonna use x and y. What we're gonna use for this formula is just p and q. So p is equal to a negative six, and Q is equal to a positive four. So now, once I've identified my ABC from the standard form, make sure it's in that form, right? Don't use this, you gotta use that. And I've identified my PQ, which is the point that I wanna find the distance from. Now, all we're simply gonna do is plug it into the formula, which I do not have memorized, but I will write out for you. Ha, ah, see, told you, you didn't have it memorized. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is just plug, chug, and simplify. I'm running out of a little space, so I'll try to do my best. So we have A, which is negative one, times P, which is a negative six. Now again, notice this is an absolute value, so I am going to be using parentheses for everything I plug in. That's gonna be plus a B, which is going to be a six, times my Q, which is four, plus a C, which in this case is going to be a negative 36, and a prep absolute value. And then I have the square root of an a squared, which is a negative one quantity squared, plus a b squared quantity squared, which is going to be a six squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and write out the values up top, just because I'm running out of a little bit of space, if I can find the right, there we go. Negative one times negative six is going to be a positive six. 
six times four is going to be a 24, and therefore a negative 36 is just gonna be a negative 36. So if I go ahead and combine all of those up, well, six plus 24 is going to be a 30. 30 minus 36 is going to be a negative six, but remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's absolute value. So distance equals absolute value of a negative six is going to be a positive six. And then over here, I have a negative one squared, which is one, a six squared, which is 36. 36 plus one is going to be a 37, but that's under the radical. So therefore my final answer is a six over the square root of a 37. Hope that helps.